I'm Joni and this is Vintageous. Thanks for joining. If this is your first time, I sell a lot of different kinds of vintage wear on Etsy and uh, definitely check out my Etsy store. The link will be in the um, description to the video. But today I'm showing you what I picked up on the weekend uh, in a little bit of a garage sale haul my mom and I went on and so I thought I would show it to you in the by category. So we're going to start off with all of the china and, and pottery that I've picked up. Um, so the first thing I want to show you is this beautiful antique flow blue plate. Just gorgeous. Look at that, hey, with a bit of a gold trim. Now, antique flow blue is a transfer wear type uh, porcelain. It's por it can be porcelain. It can be... This one has actually semi porcelain. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. It's kind of hard to, to read um, because of the blurring, but it says semi porcelain um, on that on that back stamp. And so that's a blend of porcelain and um, other ceramic material. And they did this intentionally. They, they put it in the firing process so that it would bleed. It became very popular. Um, it's just a great plate for a wall decoration. A lot of people collect them and put them up as a gallery wall. So I just love that. I thought that was really neat. Now this is probably from the early, or, or sorry, late 1800s, sort of somewhere in sort of 1895 to 1910 based on the, the back, back stamp on that. So yeah, just thought that was really neat. Um, then I wanted to show you these shard boxes and I was so excited when I found these, this fantastic garage sale. A lot of the things you're going to see are from a garage sale where the, the, it was a mom who had gone into assisted living and so they needed to downsize her items because she couldn't take everything with her. Um, and this woman had an incredible eye. She was apparently a real garage sale person herself and, uh, so I just, uh, I could have spent a lot, a lot of money, but I'll show you some of the things that I bought. So these are called shard boxes. And what it is, is it in the, um, there was a cultural revolution in China from 1966 to 76. And during the cultural revolution, it was kind of illegal. You couldn't, it was a crime if you kept porcelain and, and china in your um in your home like anything of value i believe um and you had to so they broke it they they smashed these pottery pieces these beautiful antique pottery pieces um so that they wouldn't go to jail and there was a fellow named who h-u um and he started to collect he was so upset about this because you know seeing these beautiful things being smashed he started collecting the shards of pottery and felt that he could do something with them. Um, and so then he started creating these shard boxes in about 1983, somewhere around there, 85, somewhere in that range. And the neat thing is, is each, because it's like a piece of pottery that, um, you know, it, everyone is, is unique. You can't find two the same. You'll find them that are similar, but you won't find two exactly the same. And it has this kind of repose, kind of a hammered technique around the edge. Um, it's usually, you know, sometimes the copper is really prominent or sometimes you'll see it with like co uh, silver plating um, so that the silver is more prominent than the copper. But these ones have more of a copper look to them. Um, I just think they're really, really neat, um, really fun to collect. People collect them. They are very collectible. And look at that, that beautiful blue and white and sort of a gray background um, porcelain. So that's the first little one. And then there's this one, a little one. I like this one too. I like the, the swirls on top. This is a much smaller one. But again, same story, sort of silver lined, silver plated in the inside, and then sort of more, more coppery um, outside. There's the bottom, isn't that neat? And then this one, this one's neat because it's it's greens, it's different, right? And this one is a, is a flat, whereas the others, you know, are part of a curved piece of the, of the pottery. 
so probably part of you know a vase or of a cup whereas this might have been more of a plate or a platter um yeah really neat though right and also this one's sort of oval in shape mm -hmm. so just really fun really good little collectible especially if if you know somebody that likes kind of boxes right that's a really neat little collectible um then i picked up this plate and I just really liked it again. It's look at the detail, the hand painting on there with the gold. Um, again, this is an antique side plate. Um, now the back stamp is kind of tricking me a little bit. I haven't been able to find it. It says Rena, and then it says AP. I believe it is C S or C, yeah C S. Um, so if anybody knows this in the the chat or please put a comment and let me know if you know this uh, pottery house or ceramics house um, but i just thought it was a really neat plate with a kind of art nouveau type decor i'm guessing that we're looking at probably again late 1800s early 1900s on this one um, so there's that and then this one here unfortunately when i got home I realized that there's this blemish here and it, I'm not sure if it was a chip that somebody tried to repair or what is going on here, but it feels, you can tell, you can run your finger it, it's not smooth, so. But it's still a really cool piece. And here's the back stamp on it. Um, and so this one is English. This is a, uh, now I always have to think when I pronounce this, it's worser, worser um real worser uh oval platter now again this one i'm getting it from the date from the back stamp and look i'm thinking it's around 1881 um and from jones mcduffie and stranton is what it says there too in boston so they were they had made this for a boston company that's really neat i like the shape of it too and then the last piece of pottery I bought is this beautiful, beautiful piece of Scottish pottery. I would call it a planter. To me, it feels like a planter. And here's the back stamp on that. Let me make sure I get it right way up. So what this says is it says, well, let's put it this way. <laughs> it says, Aviemore Pottery Scotland, Aviemore. So Avonmore is a, a place in Scotland and, and this pottery studio was open between like the 60s, 1964 to 8, 1980. So we know it's within that range. I just love the color. I love this kind of Art Nouveau kind of pattern on it. To me, it reminds me of um, Charles Rennie Mackintosh, if you're not familiar with Charlie Charles Rennie Macintosh. I'd, I'd encourage you to have a look. He was a very uh, prominent architect and designer during the arts and craft movement, and I, I adore adore his style. So, so that's really cool. I like that a lot. So that's the the ceramics. So now we'll do we'll move to some glass. Okay, so here's some glass that I picked up this weekend. So this one came again from that same uh, estate sale that I went to of the person that's their mother was going into at assisted living. This is a Robert Held um, beautiful, beautiful dichromic glass vase. He's very well known for, for this. Now Robert Held was a, he had a studio here in Vancouver and then he went over to Parksville on the island. Let's try to find the signature for you there. It just says RH AG, which stands for Robert Held Art Glass. Um, and his vases are very collectible, uh, just beautiful, right? It He has this kind of Art Nouveau kind of aesthetic, I would say, to his work. Um, I'll definitely put a link below to a really interesting video about his career and what he does. He is retiring, so I'm thinking that his pieces are going to start to get more and more valuable because of that. So um, it is a really good uh, art, art glass person to collect. So that's the first piece. Then I'm going to show you too a little clip about 
a farm. Um, uh, I went to a, we went to a farmhouse uh, garage sale and then we went to an actual farm. So this was the farm garage sale we went to. That was fun. It had a lot of mixture of things, uh, not a lot of antiques. I got a few things that I'll show and some baking. We got some baking. Then we stopped at this really cute little farm stall at another farm. I just love the little the decor and the way they had it organized. Look at these flowers, amazing bouquets of flowers. And then inside there was a lot of baking. This made me laugh, gluten-free and gluten-full. So this is what I picked up at the, the farm, the where I, fl where I took the, the video of the um, flowers and the uh, cookies that were gluten-free and gluten-full. <laughs> Um, and I bought this Russian, I believe it's Russian, uh, elephant garlic, um, really neat. So I'm going to roast that and, and have that for numminess. But the other thing that I bought at the, um, well, one of the other things that I bought at the farmhouse garage sale was this beautiful lamp base, oil lamp base. And what's neat is it says on the little dial, it says English made. Um, yeah, and I just thought it was a really neat thing. It's so easy to get a flute uh, or a chimney for it. Um, but yeah, just thought that was a, a neat old piece. Again, I'm guessing that's antique, so probably turn of the century, something like that. So that's what I got for glass. Then let's see what I got for metal. <laughs> okay, so this is what I picked up for metal. Now, we're talking about one end of the spectrum to the other. So this is a true antique, um, and this is called Reposé, where they hammer and do this incredibly fine, detailed silver work. This is, a, I believe, sterling silver, um, and I believe it is a brandy bowl. Um, I'm still researching it. I'm thinking maybe Dutch, um, like a Dutch, silver brandy bowl um the the back stamp marks are very odd and so i'm just trying to identify them it looks to me like a letter d and and then the sort of figure eight there and it's hard to tell what these last these two are here those are the two that i'm really struggling with i think this might be the dolphin but i'm not sure it's really hard to tell so yeah, so I'm gonna be researching this and if you like to do research and wanna help, great, please do. And uh, just put a, a comment in if you, you know, you can help me identify that. So this again came from that first garage sale with the, the uh, estate sale, I would call it more, um, for the woman that was going into assisted living. And then and another uh, garage sale got these uh, horse brasses. So these are, brasses that tie on to the um, harness of a horse, different places on the harness. And um, they're very collectible. People like to put them up in pubs and like Western themed kind of bars and, and home, you know, and home decor as well. Um, I didn't polish them, I probably should. Um, but yeah, so this looks like a wagon wheel, I would call that. And then this one, I don't know, is that a monkey or a dog? I'm not sure. <laughs> Tell me what you think in the comments. <laughs> and then this looks like a, it's like a horse drawn carriage and there's the horse. So that's the third one. And then something else that I love to find every once in a while too is a primitive tool. I don't know, there's something about a hand forged tool that I just love the kind of thought of who might have used this, what it was made for. Um, yeah, I just think it's really interesting. And I could just see, I'm starting to kind of collect them and I'll put them up probably as a grouping when I do put them up. Um, because I think they'd make a really cool shadow box, right? With just these, all these little handmade, hand forged tools. So I think I've got another little wrench um, 
I think that's it for now because I think I sold one of the other pieces but I'll start to collect more of those so that's what I got for metal and so let's move on to wood let's see what I got that was wood 